Cat. It's Maximus here this time with seven Milwaukee drills you need to get your life in order. If you don't own these seven drills, then your life is highly disorderly. And it's as simple as that. Let's go ahead and talk about some of these drills. But we'll do a couple honorable mentions first. Honorable mention number one, the Milwaukee 03719-1. Half inch compact right angle drill. All Milwaukee corded drills are all ball and needle bearings. And pretty much all of them use all helical gut gears, except for some of the older ones on some of the final reduction stages, they will use straight cut. Uh, but otherwise, Milwaukee drills were the standard to be judged by um, for a great deal of time. Although, back in yesteryear, from, you know, anyway, 30s, 40s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, Black & Decker, Sioux, variety of other brands made very good drills. Milwaukee prevailed. A lot of those other companies don't make tools like they used to. <laughs> Milwaukee actually still does on a few of them. Anyway, with the Milwaukee tools, they should always be nice and smooth. The gears should always be really nice. But if you don't own this particular 379, your life can still be in order. Here we have the 1201-1. This is the 350 RPM D-handle drill that Milwaukee discontinued basically because one, it was pretty slow. I mean, uh, it's electric screwdriver slow. Only a four and a half amp motor, but at 350 RPM it had more than enough torque. And uh, just too many people were getting twisted up with these. I mean, D-handle drills were great because you end up drilling straighter because your hands directly in line with the spindle but this 350 rpm unit was just too slow when they upgraded these motors to the 7 amp motors and they pretty much standardized them at 500 rpm on the d handle because it had essentially the same output torque as this four and a half amp at 350 rpm but sometimes it's nice to it's nice to have a good slow uh d handle drill very difficult to find these total ones they did not sell many of them but really Nice high torque. This is a, tr a true wrist breaker right here. Anyway, now moving on to Milwaukee drills that will bring order to your life. This is the 0101-1, one of the oldest drills that Milwaukee has been manufacturing as far as model number. I think the original one came out somewhere in the 1930s or so. So nearly 100 years of the, they've obviously gone through a variety of inter uh, iterations. This is my only Chinese Milwaukee drill, but modern ones, 4,000 RPM. 7 amp motor and it's actually pretty handy to have a high-speed quarter inch drill especially if you're doing pilot drilling or working with small bits you really need to spin them pretty fast really handy really like the Milwaukee still pretty nice high speed runs pretty smooth overall not a bad drill I just don't like how smooth uh, these type of Milwaukee handles are because this little indent is nothing when you're carrying around a tool you kind of want a hook here so it hooks on your fingers, it's easier to hold, especially after using it for extended periods of time. But other than that, this is a pretty solid choice when you just want a more compact, lighter weight, high speed drill, especially if you're doing pilot drilling, once again, small bits, or if you're actually using, say, little grinding stones, sanding discs, that type of stuff, high speed quarter inch drill is great for that. And actually DeWalt, Makita, a few other manufacturers still make high speed quarter inch drills but they all tend to be special order. There's enough demand for them to still make them, but not for them to be really stocked at any uh, real outlets. Here it is, the Milwaukee o Trade deuce 3 8 uh, hole shooter. There's actually an O221-1, which is a bit lesser. It didn't have as heavy duty a jack chuck on it. You always wanted the O222-1. The biggest criticism on these ones they still use a 3-8 spindle, although they put in a very heavy-duty uh, Jacobs 2BA chuck, which is a half-inch scale chuck, but still 3 8 so you can just see how much steel there is around the teeth, those deep undercuts, just a really super-duty, excellent gripping chuck. But unfortunately, still using a 3-8 spindle, and so that was the criticism. Otherwise, this is probably the best 3 8 drill Milwaukee ever made. Uh, pretty unbelievable. Only 3.5 amps, but 1,000 RPM. This is a great carpenter's drill, super smooth gears. Three hundred and sixty degree ventilation, so no matter how you're holding it like this or like this or whatever, it's still able to get plenty of air going through the drill so it doesn't get super hot. 
Of course, it is a heavy-duty Milwaukee. We can see the variable speed circuit is actually not inside the trigger. It's up here in the vent, so it gets plenty of airflow. Anyway, really excellent, excellent 3H drill. It's, one of, it's probably still my favorite. Not the most powerful. I have a porter cable and even like some crafts or a craftsman that's going to be more torque. But I don't believe that they will outlast this Milwaukee. Really smooth variable speed on this too. Really linear. A lot of tools don't have triggers that are quite that linear, and it's actually disappointing. Here we have number, unit number three, the Milwaukee 0375-1. 3.8's compact, single-hand right-angle drill, kind of similar to old Sioux designs. Really like this drill. This is actually less powerful than that uh, 0222 that I just showed you, because this is only 3.5 amps at 1300 RPMs, the same amount of amps. Not quite as heavy duty, obviously. It's a plastic housing. Gears are just a little bit smaller because they have to make them go up to this neck. But still, these things are a uh, staple for compact, one-hand, right-angle drills. They're not the greatest in all situations. I do like the DeWalt 3.8 right-angle drill. I actually have an old Black & Decker version of it. Um, but as far as one-handed drills, still pretty good, nice. Pretty linear, there's a little bit of a notching action in this trigger, but overall, this allows you to drill into basically just about any kind of super tight space, and you can do it with just one hand, or you can really get it in a tight space just by gripping the back, kind of holding it like this. You won't get as much forward pressure, but you can just get into any space that this like little five inch neck, or plus whatever the length of the bit, uh, will fit into. These things you don't need very often, but when you do, it's surprisingly enough. They're the only ones that will get into the kind of spaces that you need. And I uh, do recommend the Milwaukee. It is still a pretty decent unit. Number four on our list is something a bit more substantial. This is the Milwaukee 1660 half inch super, super hole shooter spade handle drill. Spade handle because the obvious, it's like has a sh spade shovel handle on it. These are the basically the go-to half-inch drill when you want uh, basically to do whatever you need to. Does use a pipe handle, 450 RPM on the 1660, but there are 1650s and various other versions. There are 1,000 RPM ones, 600 RPM ones, but the most common were actually this 450 RPM one. Older ones had six amp motors, and then sometime in the 80s or 90s they moved them up, bumped them up to a seven amp motor, and they never changed them uh, since then. Other companies like DeWalt uh, stopped making their equivalent units. So it's actually still, Milwaukee's one of the few manufacturers that still makes a traditional heavy duty. This is just for driving large augers, large hole saws, large self-feed bits, mixing duty, even winch drivers and that type of stuff. Super smooth. They really work well. Even this one, which has been sitting around and got rusted, is just perfect. The bearings and spindle are always just absolutely perfectly tight. There's just a little bit of backlash, a tiny amount of backlash. And this is a triple reduction gear. So this backlash is between all the different reduction gears. And I've reviewed and torn down, I think, all of these drills that I'm talking about today. Anyway, as far as a relative, sometimes they call this a compact drill, although it's relative. They even made a really expensive one that hardly sold any, uh, which had a variable speed on it. But anyway, as far as just a just a heavy duty or truly heavy duty low speed uh, half inch mixing drill, you can't really deny the 1660. These things are absolute institution, super nice gears. Just a really silent whine. It's just like a sewing machine, basically. But of course, people would argue with my choice number six here of course the milwaukee 1675-1 whole hog once again there are actually multiple versions there are some whole hogs that were not two speed almost all of them were two speed 300 rpm and low uh 1200 rpm and high as far as i know they were all uh 7.5 amp motors came out in like 1971 or something like that you know they're really early units because they have a metal reverse switch 
And actually, the first flight, Milwaukee's actually made tens of thousands of these whole hog drills. And the first 5,000 made actually had a five, or excuse me, a half inch spindle. They're a half inch drill, uh, but they're used in such heavy duty situations that they ended up upgrading the spindles after the first 5,000 to being five eight spindles. These things are an institution. Tons of stories about contractors and plumbers, electricians who have hurt themselves or known somebody who's severely hurt themselves. These things are just absolute beasts. Pretty robust motor. These things are pretty heavy. I've done a review of Makita's DA4511, which is a competition, but it is just not quite as heavy duty as what these whole hogs were. They don't have any clutches in them. So if you just want it to deliver the power, these will do it. And that's why they get people get so caught up, especially in first gear because of how much torque. And second gear, it's a 7.5 amp drill at 1200 RPM. It's actually not that particularly torquey. But of course, when you lower it in the first gear, or in low, you quadruple your torque. And that's really what gets people. They're thinking, oh, you know, I put it in second gear. And the worst part about that is how stiff that switch is. They use it in, they use it in second gear. They say, oh, it's pretty easy for me to handle. And then they don't really, and it's part of just the nature of, of humans where it's kind of difficult for you to perceive uh, things moving in exponents, but when you move it in the low gear, you all of a sudden have quadrupled the amount of force that this thing puts out, and that's when people get it caught up. The whole reason Milwaukee even came out with this drill was to make it have just a bit shorter of a handle and to be a right angle drill that was one heavy duty for much heavier duty drilling, but that would fit into the 16 inch spaces with uh, hole saws and self feed bits between studs and uh, uh, residential and commercial construction. And so they're known as a, fold, a folding drill or a stud and joist drill. Tons of manufacturers have made uh, knockoffs, Rigid, uh, DeWalt, Makita, all sorts of people. And actually, none of them really did stack up to the original 1675 whole hog. Absolutely love these drills. The biggest issue is they're pretty darn heavy. Anyway, moving on. Here we are with the Milwaukee 1101-1. This actually is the 1101-1 D-handle drill that's almost always sold in the gooseneck half-inch drill kit. But And that kind of confuses people, but it, that's really how it's sold. The D-handle drill and then the, the two-speed, TU-speed, uh, right angle head. It is a two-speed. There's actually a gear reduction in here. So even though this is a 500 RPM drill motor, comes out at 335 RPM, or you can actually flip this around because there is a gear ratio in here. It isn't just one to one. And so you can make this 500 RPM come out at, it's like 700 or something, 735 RPM. Anyway, these are the more modern ones. This is still an American made one. Seven amps, 500 RPM, and really pretty heavy duty once again. Has a circuit in the vent, super smooth. These are really pretty nice. They're a standard for electricians and lighter duty. Some plumbers use them. The biggest issue with these is if you're driving very large hole saws um, or using them for mixing duties, it's not these gears, but the gears in here overheat and will end up losing their temper and stripping out. You'll blow up the gears in this right angle head. If you're doing real heavy duty stuff, that's why the 1660 exists why the Milwaukee whole hog exists. This is actually just so you can get around existing conduits, existing piping, that type of stuff. It's a little bit more versatile that way. And because you have this long handle to go along with it, uh, it's pretty easy to keep in control. Super smooth variable speed. These are really a staple. And they still sell these. Even Home Depot used to stock these. I don't know if they did, but like five years ago, they used to stock these things. Unfortunately, they're getting real expensive. I've seen, even recently, I saw one at a pawn shop. Uh, and they wanted like $160 for an old beat up one. It's actually amazing how much. Uh, it must be like the pandemic and all the people, you know, doing stuck at home, doing home improvements have driven up tool prices. Because, uh, these things you used to be able to find for like 50 bucks or something like that. And now they're just getting outrageous. But they are still pretty good. Really nice, versatile half-inch drill that, you know, you can use for light mixing. You can use it for mixing thin set and that type of stuff. But you don't want to mix concrete or, like, floor leveling compound, that type of stuff with it. 
In short bursts, sure, but yeah, as a contractor, no, you're going to be risking blowing out that two-speed. They're really made for running, uh, you know, more mid-sized bits, one to two-inch range, that type of stuff, and being able to get into very tight uh, spaces. Really pretty awesome unit. Anyway, that's the 1101. And we'll go ahead and finish this off. This drill is the Milwaukee 1854 three quarter inch super hole shooter, 350 RPM, 10 amps. So like at the beginning of that video, the 1201, that was 4.5 amps at 350 RPM. This is more than double the power. But it seems proportionally oversized. It's really made for some very heavy duty drilling. This is made for running winches, uh, mixing concrete, uh, driving, you know, post hole augers. This is some of the heaviest duty. And the reason they, a lot of these three quarter inch drills kind of settled around that 350 RPM 10 amp motor because beyond that, they become a two person drill. That's really the, the bottom line. This will, you know, this drill, if it just gets stopped cold in some kind of heavy duty, you know, you're building log cabins or something like that, it can pull you off your feet. I mean, this thing will put out over 100 foot pounds of torques, you know, just static. Absolutely super duty. Pretty darn heavy. This thing is absolutely massive. Has a super long handle, it uses Milwaukee's you know standard old handle. They just add this extension. Surprisingly enough, you can buy this extension and actually add it to like whole hogs and 1660s, but it kind of there is some variation from the hole spacing. Anyway, the biggest criticism about these is they have these big vents to move tons of air to make to keep the motor cool even under very heavy duty operation. But they had these like little slats to try to prevent too much debris from getting into the fan. But if you throw this down on the ground like this one, uh, those slats can get pretty well busted up. And you know, Milwaukee still makes these. They're like $600 or something now. They're very expensive. So usually the only contractors that buy them are like concrete contractors when they want to run uh, core drills, small core drills. And it's cheaper than buying a like a dedicated Milwaukee core drill, which they do make. But those things start getting into the you know one to two thousand dollars. Once again, uh, super extra heavy duty. They have what's known as a key drive chuck, so the chuck actually slides onto a taper. There's this uh, two flats cut on the spindle, and so and there's this little receiver on the chuck, so the spindle drives the chuck via those two dogs. Doesn't put any, there are no screw threads. Which is actually really good because the chucks on these end up being just absolutely perfectly centered. And there's no chance of them coming unscrewed in heavy duty reversing operations. And the big deal about this is just large bearings, three quarter inch, very heavy duty spindle. So it won't bend when you have large bits like uh, post hole augers in them. And very large heavy duty gears that can take lots of uh, heavy duty load for a long periods of time. But still super smooth gears triple reduction you can easily turn it by your hand but just to give you an idea just the amount of moving mass and that's with me holding on to the chuck just a huge amount of mass and it's actually not too loud it's quite reasonable it's one of the nice things about milwaukee's is that they did pay attention to their fans so they aren't just absolutely screaming in your ear when you're running them still plenty of noise just isn't that you know super screaming high pitched and besides that not a lot else to say besides this as far as uh, J uh standard jacobs chuck drills this is as big as they get from pretty much any manufacturer there are a few that had like 13 16 i have one a black and decker 644 but as far as Milwaukee, this was their largest uh, chuck drill. Was the, uh, They actually started out as the 1850 series, and then they moved to this more modern 1854. And once they did that, I think it's been like 30 years or more that it has been this basically exact same drill, except for I'm sure they're made in China now. And one of the few manufacturers where you can even buy corded drills that are of this magnitude. And the reason you'd want something like this is obviously this is going to take uh, a whole lot more uh, abuse and do a whole lot more work for you than any of the cordless stuff. Milwaukee does not have a three-quarter inch cordless drill. You can imagine how big and heavy that would be. Although they've been coming out with huge inch drive impacts, so maybe they will come out with a uh, three-quarter inch cordless drill at some point. But anyway, thought it was something that would be uh, nice to finish off this video with. And obviously with the power of this drill, this will bring order into anybody's life. <laughs> 
Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.